Hi there, this is Josh from Literary Gladiators, and for the first time in quite some time, I'm here with a book review. I hope that you've been enjoying the book reviews that all of my great fellow contributors have been putting out, uh, and uh, today I'm here to uh, talk to you about a book that I just finished. Uh, the book that I'm going to be reviewing is Herbert Hoover, A Life by Glenn Jeanson, and Herbert Hoover was the 31st president of the United States of America. Uh, he was known most for being the president that served before Franklin D. Roosevelt. And he also uh, oversaw the beginning and the drastic effects that took place during the Great Depression. The main idea of this book, though, is the intent of debunking that idea that Hoover was the reason for the Great Depression and that he was careless and didn't do anything about it. He was not a successful president, and uh, Gene Sohn will admit that, but Gene Sohn also wants us to know that Hoover was an important and inspirational uh, figure, uh, not just in American history, but also in world history. Uh, this is a general biography, but it is driven by that main idea that you do not often see in your general history books, which portray and depict uh, FDR as being uh, the hero that saved the nation, uh, not just domestically, but also on the uh, global front. And FDR did uh, do some things that were very uh, noteworthy. And he was also a much more charming person. Uh, this book does go into uh, particular detail about Hoover's attitude. Uh, but the general history books have also deemed Hoover as uh, the general idea of uh, overseeing the Great Depression and not doing anything about it and not caring, uh, when in actuality Hoover was very, uh, he, he was a very determined, he was a very a hardworking individual who was to the point that he was very intense. Uh, but the uh, conclusion is made that he did not have political skills and the, and that he was the kind of person that would have only really wanted the nomination for president for the Republican Party if it was given to him. He was not the kind that liked to campaign or was good at campaigning. Uh, but this book covers the duration of his life. Uh, he lived a very long life. He was born uh, on According to him, and I, and he was born around midnight, so uh, he got to choose whether he got to choose the day he was born, uh, and he chose August 11th. But historically speaking, historians choose August 10th. Uh, he was born in 1874 in West Branch, Iowa. He was orphaned at a very young age, along with his older brother, Tad, and his younger sister, May. Uh, both of his parents died when he was younger, uh, and they all went to live with different relatives. Uh, Hoover went to college at Stanford University. Uh, he became a mining engineer. Uh, it does cover his career as a mining engineer. Uh, getting into uh, his relationship with uh, Lou Henry Hoover, uh, and it covers his work as the great humanitarian. Uh, some of his biggest roles included uh, the Commission for Relief in Belgium during World War I. Uh, he also oversaw the Food Administration uh, during uh, Woodrow Wilson's presidency. Uh, and then Hoover became the Secretary of Commerce 
during uh, Warren Harding and Calvin Coolidge's administrations uh, between 1921 and 1929. Uh, this book explains that uh, people wanted Hoover to run for president in 1920, and they felt that it would have almost been a guarantee that he would have uh, become a two-term president overseeing the 1920s, which was a very prosperous time uh, from 1921 to 1929. Uh, and if he, ran, if he served as president from 1921 to 1929, he would have been one of our most successful presidents, as argued in this book. Uh, there was a bit of an economic uh, concern during the Harding administration, uh, but they were able to rebound, and uh, even though Hoover was a much smarter person than Harding, Harding was able to surround himself with smart people like Hoover. Uh, and this book uh, goes over a lot of the things that Hoover accomplished as uh, Commerce Secretary. A lot of these things uh, we can look back and feel a great sense of appreciation for uh, Herbert Hoover. And this book also covers the uh, post-presidency and his very major and active efforts, uh, his writing, his uh, work, his political work, his political commentary per se, uh, not like you'd find on television, but like it would be him responding to everything that was going on. He was a very, he was a huge critic uh, of the New Deal. And the, the book that he wrote and published in 1934, uh, Challenge to Liberty, uh, makes mention to his concerns about the New Deal and uh, what he saw uh, as the reason for the Great Depression. Uh, and even though he was the chief target uh, for each of FDR's uh, four campaigns for the presidency, uh, Hoover eventually uh, was able to redeem himself uh, in the public eye. He worked with Harry S. Truman, Dwight D. Eisenhower. Uh, he had the admiration of John F. Kennedy uh, and even uh, Lyndon B. Johnson reached out to him. Herbert Hoover died on October 20th, 1964 at the age of 90. Uh, he was one of, at the time, he was one of two presidents to reach his 90th year, the other one being John Adams. Uh, now there are six presidents, Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, and George H.W. Bush are also part of that list. Uh, Jimmy Carter has since surpassed the record for longest retirement at 41 years, and he's now the oldest living at 98 years, uh, and both of them, 41 years and counting, 98 years and counting. Uh, but this book was very informative and very accessible with its information. Uh, it was, for the most part, chronological, but if they were harping on a main idea such as when he was talking about uh, Hoover's Supreme Court nominees and appointments, then he would go over that go over it in its entirety rather than uh, hop back to it for the sake of uh, being chronologically correct. My chief criticism would have to be the uh, consistency of where it was trying to go as far as the, uh, as far as his uh, balancing his personal life and his public life were concerned. Early on, there was a great deal of detail regarding his childhood, his upbringing, uh, his education. Uh, we had a greater sense of his personal life and his interests until we get to his entry into public service. When we get into his entry in public service, and 
even uh, beyond the presidency, uh, much of the concentration is placed on the public service and his uh, connection, his political connection throughout his career. Uh, we don't really, we we may get a sprinkle of details regarding his personal life when I think that there could have been a balance where uh, you, you really don't get much early but I think that there were particular details that we could have gotten as far as his personal life was concerned uh, later on and even little details within his presidency. I know that th there's a picture in here that shows a game of Hoover Ball taking place. But it's not... Uh, they don't make mention to it. Uh, I mean, it's a bit minuscule, but uh, then again, there are particular details that we got early on, too. So, I think that if you're going to talk about aspects of his personal life and delve into them early, you also have to do it, uh, you have to do it throughout. Here's the game of Hoover Ball that I was talking about, right on the top. But, uh, a prime example of, a prime example of a book that was able to balance it out was Thomas Jefferson, The Art of Power uh, by John Meacham, which I think is one of the model uh, biographies that I've read as far as presidential biographies are concerned. Uh, uh, but well, I, what I will say is that the, uh, the, uh, the dates in this book were correct uh, because I read Herbert Hoover in the White House back in 2019 and the ages that they showed as far as how old Warren Harding was at his death and how old Lou Hoover was at her death. Uh, in Herbert Hoover in the White House, they were incorrect. In this book here, they are correct with the uh, uh, telling us how old Lou Henry Hoover was at her death, and that was 69 years old. The one major difference about this book compared to Herbert Hoover in the White House by Charles Rapley is that uh, that one is more concentrated and the concentration is his his tenure in the White House. Herbert Hoover Life by Glenn Jean Song is a general biography and I can see where if the uh, in a work that is meant to concentrate on a particular aspect will only uh, engage in the discussion of relevant details. Uh, but this is deemed as a general biography, but it's more so an argument of the main idea that uh, Jean Sohn is going into this piece, uh, and that is that uh, Hoover was, was more important and influential uh, than he's given credit for. Uh, and not just in American history, but in world history. Uh, he got a lot of honors uh, for his efforts uh, regarding humanitarian work in other countries. Uh, he was very much a uh, uh, driving force in uh, feeding the hungry across the world. I think that the conclusion of uh, democracy is a harsh employer, uh, which you can find on page 291 of the uh, hardcover edition uh, of this book. Uh, I think that that pretty much is the cream of the crop as far as understanding uh, Gene Sohn's thesis about Herbert, about Herbert Hoover is concerned. And that is, and I quote, Hoover's good deeds and sharp mind, his generosity and his sincerity outweigh these faults, as per 
uh, explained a little bit uh, the paragraphs before. His mistakes constituted errors in judgment, not mortal sins. He was both human and humane. And if he does not deserve a spot on Mount Rushmore, he does not deserve to be pilloried as the scapegoat of the Great Depression either. History is more complicated than that. I think that that says a lot. I think it says, it, it gives us a general overview of understanding Herbert Hoover and his place in history. I give this book four stars out of five. I think it's a good book. I think it's very accessible, and I think that people should read this in order to get a greater understanding of Herbert Hoover and his place in a mystery. Uh, you should know that this is a biography that is trying to debunk the idea that uh, Hoover was a that Hoover was a, not a competent person, uh, but in actuality he was a very competent person. He was just not meant for politics and not meant for leadership roles such as the presidency. But yet he was incredible as an engineer and a humanitarian uh, Secretary of Commerce, uh, he excelled in those roles, and uh, he excelled as far as uh, doing the best that he possibly could for his country is concerned. Thank you for tuning into this video. I hope you check out some more videos on our channel. Uh, there are a lot of great reviews from a lot of great contributors. And if you really like what you see, please support our channel on Patreon, for the money that we make will allow us to provide you, the viewer, with even more great content. For now and as always, I encourage you to keep reading.